Good luck, good luck, good luck to everyone. My apologies for not being able to finish everything I wanted to, but hopefully you guys watched other YouTube videos, did practice with your teachers, and yeah, good luck for tomorrow or good luck for Friday or whenever you have your exam. Please do drop a subscribe and drop a like as well if you found this video helpful. I will be doing more units in the future. Hopefully you guys know this information by now, but there's no downside in me just quickly going over it again. So your exams will have part A and part B. Once part A is done, you will do part B. They are two totally different sections. So once you finish part A, in part A, you will have to do everything yourself. You will have to create the database, the relationships, do your normalization, all that stuff. And in part B, you are given a database to actually work with. So you're going to be given a Microsoft Access file and you're going to be asked to do certain actions with that file. It's mainly going to be forms in part B. So you are given some templates and the templates you are given are activity two, three, four, six, and seven. You're not given anything else. You will have to create the other files yourself. Go over this with your teacher again. I won't have enough time to go over everything here. Uh, next, so the submission files, there are two folders needed. We're going to be needing part A and part B. I'm going to show you guys how to create that quickly. But this is a general example of how you should create it. I'm going to pull over onto this screen now. Um, pass, this is 20, the 2021 paper. Right, there we go. And this is how they've told us to do it. So let me just zoom all the way in if I can. Um, is this part A? Yes, this is part A. Where are we? We are here. Okay, so this is the name of the folder we need to create. So if I, so I've done it here. I'm going to actually show you guys how to do this. So imagine this is your user area when you log in to your test account or your exam account tomorrow or whenever you have your exam. We're going to create two folders in here. We're going to call it part B. Or we're going to call it part A. So maybe I should pin this to one side. And I should also pin to the other side, this one here, so you guys can see both my things at the same time. So it says for the folder, we need to have the center number first, then the registration number, then the surname of the person doing the exam, then the first letter of the first name, then part A. It looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. So how do we do this? We right click in a blank area now i'm using windows 11 so mine looks slightly different you might be using windows 10 right click go to new select folder now you're going to be given your center number at the beginning of the exam so let's just say mine is 784512 right you're going to put an underscore so you're going to press and hold shift on your keyboard and press the minus sign at the top of the keyboard you get your underscore my registration number could be something Again, you'll be given this information. Let's say 326598. That's my registration number, right? Again, I'm going to put an underscore. So press and hold shift and press the minus sign. Then it says my surname, G-R-A-N-T for me. Then I'm going to do an underscore again. So press and hold shift and press the minus sign at the top of the keyboard. Then the first initial or my initial of my first name is going to be R, right? And again, I do another underscore press and hold shift, press the minus sign at the top of the keyboard. And then I'm going to label this one part A. Press enter and that's everything you need. Remember these two first numbers you're going to be given by your school or by the examiner tomorrow morning or whenever you have your exam. You have to do exactly the same thing for part B. So I might as well show you how to do that here. What I do, I could just copy this, right? But because you shouldn't really have access to part A when you're doing part B, then let's do it again all the way from scratch. Right click, go to new, go to folder. And I'm going to say, what was my number? 784512. That's my center number, underscore. My registration number now is going to be uh, 326598. Again, you'll be given these numbers tomorrow. G-R-A-N-T for my surname. My first initial is R, then underscore again. I'm going to call this one part B for Bravo, right? I'll try and zoom in on the video when editing to show this. So this is my part A folder. That's my part B folder. The next thing we have to do is to get those files into the folders and export them as a PDF. I think I have some information on this on my PowerPoint, actually. So let's go back here. So again, this was me naming the folders here. The only difference 
between these folders will be the A and the B. So part A will obviously be part A and part B will be for part B. Um, so these are the files that we have to submit for the coursework. I'm going to go in and show you how to actually export these as PDFs because that is a requirement of the, um, of the exam. So this is for part A. We're going to have activity 1, 2, 3, 3D, 4, and 5. Again, read over the examiner's report, which is probably given to you by your teachers. I will try and upload the 2020 or the 2021 examiner's report to, to, uh, to the end of this video if I can. Next, I have part, oh, this should be part B, my apologies, part B files for submission. Again, taken from the 2021 paper. Now, these instructions will be on your exam paper. So again, activity 6, 7, and 8 only. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are the previous ones. Uh, what's next? Naming files. So let me show you how to name your files correctly. All right, so this was copied or screenshotted directly from an exam paper. So it tells us how to name it here. So this is going to be how you name activity 1. It's going to be activity 1 underscore your registration number underscore your surname underscore first letter of first name. So let me have a quick showing of what this actually looks like. If I can bring this up downloads folder here so two three and four let me copy that into my submission folder here that's going to be for part a so these are the files that you should have in your part a and now again these are rich text formats or so rtf files they will open in microsoft word perfectly fine but you will have to export them as a pdf so let's just say this is activity two um let's do that one so it's activity two it's already there underscore my registration number was something like 784512, something like that, right? Whatever yours is, again, it's going to be given to you by your school or by your exams officer tomorrow. Underscore my uh, registration number, then my surname, G-R-A-N-T. Underscore first letter of first name, R. So that's my activity two done. I'm going to do the same thing for activity three. But what I could do, I'm just going to be lazy, right? I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to rename. Uh, show more option. This is again Windows 11, so it's slightly different. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go to Activity 3. It's, it doesn't take very long to rename these, but I'm just being lazy. I'm showing a different way because most of you probably know how to do it the normal way already. And all I'm going to change here is Activity 2 to Activity th uh, 2, 3. Yep. I'm going to right click on the last one again. I'm going to go to Rename. And I'm going to paste this information I've copied already. And it comes up with activity two and all the details I have. I'm going to change this to activity four. That's how you name, that's how you rename your documents that you should be working with. All right. The next section, I'm going to show you how to export as a PDF. Right. So again, you get given an RTF document. So that's rich text format. This will open in Microsoft Word perfectly fine. However, you will need to export this as a PDF. So to export as a PDF, I'm going to show that now, but typically you go to File, Export, and Export as PDF, and you choose the location you want it to be in. This should ideally be Part A or the Part B folder. So let me go and open my Activity 2 document here. Double click on that. One second, that's opened off screen, so let me just drag it across. Now I will show how to do the screenshots for these in the next video. I'm going to try and do as much as I can tonight. But let's just imagine I do a screenshot of, let's say, this. And I paste it, uh, table structure here. And I do another one. So I'm just trying to fill out my entire thing with everything I need, something like that. And I've got all the stuff I need in my document. So this is now completed. What I need to do, I go to File, top left-hand corner, right? Now this should be the same no matter which version of Windows um, Microsoft Office you're using. The older versions look slightly different. But typically, you go to File, go down to Export. This is the quickest way, I believe. It's already clicked on um, PDF XPS there. Then you go to X, uh, Create PDF Stroke XPS. And now you're going to choose the location where you want this to be saved. Now, for me, I'm choosing my Downloads folder and where I have Submission. Then I have Part A and Part B folder. Yours is going to be in a slightly different location. Yours is going to be wherever the IT department of your school has put your files. Doesn't really matter where it is. Just make sure you save 
activity one, two, three, four, five in the part A folder. Now, when you've browsed to that folder, the name is going to be exactly the same name as you had the RTF document or the Word document in. Once that's okay, click publish and that's it. Now, mine is going to open up in Chrome because I chose Chrome as my PDF reader, but that's it. You finished. I'm going to show that two more times yeah i might as well show it two more times for the other documents and as you can see when i come back into my folder i've got two activity two files one is an rtf file the original file i got and the other one is the pdf which i just exported so let me go to activity three now what's activity three about oh that's the query stuff okay so drag that onto this side again i'm just going to do a random screenshot of something i have on my other screen paste it here Let's just imagine, oh, this is wonderful. This is now finished. Again, I go to File, Export, Create PDF Stroke XPS. Choose the location I want it to be saved in. Now, this already brings up the location because I, I saved one file in that location already. It already has the correct name. And I'm just going to click Publish and it's going to open for me in Chrome don't really want to look at this now. I'm going to close this and do it one more time just so you guys get the hang of this. And as you can see here as well, I've got two Activity 3 files. One is an RTF file and one is a PDF. Let me close this one so, so I don't slow my computer down too much. Where is the other one? It's here. Let's close this one as well. Right, so I'm going to open Activity 4. Again, do another random screenshot. This is, a, this is going to need a bit more screenshots when you're doing it. So where's my screenshot? Here we go. Screen print here. Let's just say you fill this in perfectly fine. Same process. Nothing changes here. You only do this when you've finished doing each section. You don't do it beforehand. File. Export. Create PDF stroke XPS document. Then you click on this button here. You choose the location you want it to be in. And because this is activity four, it needs to be in part A in the part A folder. I'm going to click publish and mine is going to open in Chrome because I chose Chrome again as my PDF reader. I'm going to close this. I'm going to go back to that main folder. And as you can see in here, I've got all my documents saved as a Word document or RTF document and a PDF as well. This is where you would have your activity one, two, three, four, sorry, one, two, three, three D, four and five. So that's how you do that. Thank you guys for watching please do leave a subscribe and a like now the next video is going to be activity one evidence activity two three four and five so i'm going to show you what the examiner report expects you to have for these types of activities and where they need to be yes the documents are clearly laid out but i'm going to try and do as much as i can tonight thanks for watching